you were very quick uh, to congratulate uh, President-elect Biden, Vice President-elect Harris uh, on their win, uh, even extended an invite uh, to him to the Munich conference. I know he's attended for many decades now. To what extent do you think this will really reflect a change in the trust that the Europeans do and don't have for the United States? I think there is a wonderful, a positive opportunity waiting to be seized now because, uh, of course, we have had a really uh, regrettable loss of trust in the, in, in the transatlantic cooperation. I cannot think of anyone better equipped because of his long-standing personal relationship with so many European leaders. I cannot think of anyone better equipped than your future president to uh, try to repair the trust thing. So I think that's going to uh, work very well. And I also believe that there are a number of what you would call low-hanging fruit. Just as one example, a return by the United States of America to the Paris climate deal and future uh, joint enterprises in the climate arena. I think that's going to produce a sea change in the way Europeans look at America. Uh, and they will. we will be so pleased if we're no longer being called a foe of America, but a partner. Maybe sometimes a difficult one, maybe sometimes not always an extremely pleasant one, but actually a good one. Is it fair to say that there's going to be, there's likely to be an actual honeymoon a transatlantic honeymoon uh, for a period of time between the Americans and Europeans? Uh, I certainly believe so, but, but, there's a big but. Uh, I've, personally, I've, I've been saying to my German and European friends, um, curb your enthusiasm. Don't now sit back and wait for President Biden and his future administration to bring all the goodies to Europe. That's probably not going to happen. We will have to bring something to the United States. Uh, we will have to uh, talk about uh, equitable burden sharing. We will have uh, to talk and to make offers uh, on such issues as as trade and on on how to best how best to deal with China. But Ian, let me add one uh, one important point: for five, six, almost seven decades. European decision makers had a good reason to believe that America was going to be present in Europe, was a European power. The four years of the Trump administration have, of course, created significant doubt. And this doubt is not going to go away completely because Europeans are not dumb. You know, they, they are now thinking, do we have a guarantee that four years from now, uh, the American voter may not uh, vote into office uh, someone like Donald Trump again, and then we would be back to square one. In other words, there is an element of, 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 of doubting the reliability of the American ally. And that's going to be really hard to repair for any uh, uh, administration. Did Trump do that much? I mean, he said a lot of things that were deeply antagonistic to the Europeans. He moved some troops out of Germany, you know, he had some more forward deployments to Poland. Uh, the Russia sanctions are still kind of the Russia sanctions. How much of this is bark and no bite? Well, I, you know, politics uh, uh, and international relations, uh, uh, of course, is about money, it's about uh, military cooperation, it's, it's about guarantees, it's about trade, but it is also about symbols. It just so happens that from a German viewpoint, America is not just any partner. America, the White House, represented to us in the post-World War II period uh, the wisdom and the, the values of what we call the West. America was for us, and ho hopefully will again be, the leading power of the West, uh, representing 
these shared values of human dignity, etc. And quite frankly, the last four years, in the minds of many, many of my countrymen, America lost the ability to lead the West 